Hello, welcome back to 3D Drawing for your Model Railway. I'm aware it's been a long time since I've done any videos, um, any CAD updates. Uh, obviously, real life's got in the way a little bit back, being back to work again. Um, I've also had some projects, um, I've done a major refurbishment in the back garden, so various things have got in the way. Um, but I'm going to try and get back to doing some videos on a more regular basis. Uh, and the next project that I'm looking at doing is a continuous welded rail train. Um, these were seen quite frequently around Tunbridge um, and obviously for me having a, a layout that I'm constructing of Tunbridge in the loft it would make sense for me to start to look at doing these um, trains through 3D printing. You can find a really good article online on the LTSV website um, regarding the history of the, the units. Uh, essentially there's two builders, um, we're looking at Cowan Shieldens and Plessa Fura. Uh, and the units that primarily were around Tunbridge were the plus a fewer ones, so they're the ones I'll be uh, looking to produce. Um, there was multiple sets made across various different years, and, and they all seem to run in the same formations. That formation would be the stabling unit with the rail handling gantry, four intermediate wagons, a clamp wagon, four more intermediate wagons, a power wagon, and a chute wagon. For the plans for the CAD that we're going to do, you can again find it like most things on the Barham or Model Railway Group's uh, website on their prototype page. You can just scroll all the way down to the bottom. Down um, here we've got the NSE uh, resource guide for the infrastructure and you'll find this plan within that document. As I mentioned, all of these wagons were formed into sets. Uh, the Network Southeast region, which I model, had five sets. And they were spread across various different positions within the region. And you can see the makeup of each set with the power wagon, chute wagon, stabling wagon, clamp wagon, and all of the perch or intermediate wagons each set would contain. From the research I've done, I can gather that set one was maintained uh, at Colchester, and sets 11 through to 15 were all maintained at three bridges. I can't take the credit for the majority of the research that's been done. Um, it's all done primarily from Paul Wade and he's supplied me with copies of all the research he's done. The all of them broken down into the various different parts of each wagon. Um, from drawings through to photographs, the scale plans, even things on the transfers. So I've, I've pulled that all together and obviously we're going to work through what we can um, to try and produce these wagons. Primarily I'm going to be drawing them in N-Gage, but obviously you can just scale those up to any, any scale you're working for. Uh, your primarily, your issue is going to be when you go to print them, what, how you're going to print those larger wagons in the various different scales. To give you an idea of some of the, the research Paul's done, this is a photograph of one of the sheets out of those folders, where he's actually got up close and personal with one of these units, and he's gone around and measured everything. Um, so all the dimensions will be there measured directly off of the wagons and we can transfer those document those dimensions into the model as we go. Um, so it's not going to be necessary that you have a copy of the plans yourself because obviously as I go through the tutorials you'll be able to follow along and just copy the dimensions that I add in with the angles etc and, and it'll all become pretty self-explanatory as we work our way through that model. Photograph wise Paul's provided me um, with a USB stick full of photographs. Um, these are just a selection of the ones that we can use. Uh, they, they show pretty much wagons from every single angle you can imagine. Um, but on the outside, above and obviously next to the wagon. So we've got multiple different angles we can look at to hopefully dry and draw this in, in as much detail as we possibly can. Now the one thing that we do have to be careful of is to make sure we're actually looking at um, photographs of the correct version, as I said, there's the Cowan's version and the Plasma, and they both did appear at Tunbridge. Uh, you can primarily you can see the, dif the difference in the shape of the body. Uh, to give you an example, this one here, this is a Plasma version, you can see the side of the cab is quite square and flat, whereas the Cowan's version, which is a photograph at the top, you can see that the, the unit's got more of an angled side. So they do stand out, but there's a lot of commonality between the wagons. You just got to make sure that we're looking at the right things when we're drawing um, from these photographs. 
Paul isn't the only person who supplied me with photographs. I also found some on Flickr by Ernie Puddock, um, and he's kindly allowed me to use those photographs within these videos as well. These were all taken at Toten back in 2004, 2001, 2003. So various different um, ages of these photographs. Um, but they give you good examples and close-ups of some of the more detailed parts that we can use, again, while we're drawing in, in the Fusion 360 software. So operationally, these sets would be moved to the work site using a locomotive. Um, once they're within the work site, the power wagon is fitted with a diesel engine, which is uh, powerful enough to enable it to self-propel itself around the work site. Um, obviously, if you look at the flat wagon itself, it's pretty flat on the top, and it's going to make it really difficult for us to, to think about how you would motorise that, or even if you'd want to motorise that. Because as I said, the majority of the time, it's only going to be self-propelled within the work site. It will be travelling to and from or by a loco. So for me, it makes sense to just use these as um, haul sets um, with no, no requirement for any power or motor within them. Interestingly, once the sets had been unloaded and they required a fresh um, set of rails to be loaded to them, the chute wagon, the power wagon and the crane gantry wagon would all be uncoupled from the intermediate wagons. Um, the those wagons would be kept here at Tunbridge while the intermediates would be sent away to be reloaded. Uh, apparently the reason behind doing this was to reduce the risk of vandalism. Uh, obviously when you've got equipment like this you don't want to be leaving them sidings where potentially they've got that higher risk and apparently when they were loaded in Manchester that's a risk that, uh, that they saw the requirement to remove these wagons from. Um, Additionally, there was a system within them, which you can read all this on, on that LPSB website, there's a system within them um, for the brakes, and occasionally they got left on within these, so it's made more sense to, to leave these, these three wagons within the yard. So knowing that these were these intermediate wagons were separated out, it would make sense for us to attack this project using those intermediate wagons as the initial starting point. Primarily, there's the majority of the train is made up of these wagons. It will give us a, an eight wagon train, plus obviously you'll have to make the alterations for the clamp wagon, which isn't significant. It's, it's the same base wagon, but some of these units on top, which hold the rail in place, are slightly different. Primarily, that's going to be the main difference between those. So that would give us an initial rake of nine wagons that everyone could use and have that as a starting point. And then you could even can finish that as you model and leave that at that point, or you can continue on through this project and add in the shoot, the power, and the gantry stabling wagon. The other useful commonality between all of them is the majority of the wagons use the Y25 fabricated bogey. The odd one out is obviously the power wagon, um, which obviously has different bogies to accommodate the need for the self propelled function within the train set. One thing I thought about when with this project is whether you could actually have the train loaded or not, or whether um, there's any way of producing the rail. So obviously I've done a bit of looking around on the internet, um, thought about various different things that might be able to do, but then I came across a website, um, which I think might prove quite useful. Whether it will work or not, I'm not entirely sure, but it's, it's worth something that we could look at potentially further down the road. So as I say, I found on the internet this website here, model well, uh, nscalekits.co.uk and, and they've done um, welded rail using um, flexible plastic which pre-colours the rust collar um, but there is a video of it actually working and obviously you can come to this website and have a look at it yourself and it goes round corners through junctions and things which potentially, potentially could be quite useful now would this be transferable into what we're doing potentially yes maybe um, my biggest question or concern would be how well the trains would they be able to maintain um, their contact with the, the track itself uh, with obviously 3D printed stuff being quite light I'd imagine these are metal wagons potentially or, or heavily loaded wagons and that's something potentially to get around um, there's you could put pockets underneath the wagons to, to load them up with some sort of lead or, or weight weighted metal um, the other question I would have is what sort of radius corners could you get around these um, now that a lot of the videos you can see that on here is quite a wide sweeping curve would actually work 
going down, I don't know, to 15, 12, 10, 9 inch radius corners. I'd imagine 9 is probably not. And you're probably going to have to be something quite wide and sweeping. Uh, but if, if this is an option, then potentially uh, $23 for a section. Um, it's something I potentially have a look at. Um, and see whether it would work or not, but yeah, it's, it's an option we could look at down the road.